I'm delighted to participate in this really, truly most distinguished of civic events in our city and tonight in which Kim Gardner is the nominee for a giant in our city. I say nominee instead of honoree because Kim is a political animal and in the present climate nominee carries with it a certain panache for him. Uh, indeed, in light of Kim's own political races, I, I have wished that tonight's honor had come as the result of an actual election so that we could say that Kim had finally been victorious in one. But in any case, tonight's award is particularly appropriate because Cam is a giant in every wonderful sense of the word. Zealous and robust and omnipresent and larger than life. And thank heavens for Carolyn. If it weren't for her, we would have more of Cam than we do. <laughs> and how would we handle that? From his youth onward, Kim has dominated everything he has ever done. Athletics, debate, student government, his mission, the law review, business, politics, church administration, service in the community, ad infinitum. Part of this is because underneath that impish country boy persona and that red hair, Kim really has a truly brilliant mind. He reads voraciously and remembers everything he has ever read. He enjoys music ranging from classical to country and gear up for tonight. He prizes and collects exquisite art, quotes poetry endlessly, and has an opinion on everything. <laughs> Feeling, I might add, some compulsion to express in detail every one of those opinions. <laughs> and through it all, this great hulk of a man is as tender as a child. He weeps often. He weeps openly over the things that matter most to him. His family, his friends, his faith, his love of everything good in this life. Bellowing voice, and boisterous manner aside, Cam is in fact a huge, gigantic marshmallow, a sheep in wolf's clothing. <laughs> it will be impossible, even with the heroic efforts of the chamber tonight, to describe adequately Cam's charitable impact on this city, this state, and now well beyond these borders. He is purely and simply one of the most generous men I have ever known in my life. And I don't mean just the community fundraising, the public giving, the obvious philanthropy we've seen from Kim and Carolyn for years. I mean the private, behind the scenes, out of view generosity to absolute legions of friends, family, neighbors, and strangers. And never with an expectation of anything in return. It is this charitable impulse in Kim's soul, this generous reach of his heart, that makes him a giant in our city. He believes every kind word and honorable deed is a charitable act. He believes a smile and a handshake ultimately come from a charitable heart. He believes helping the young to achieve and the elderly to be cared for are inseparable from the scriptural injunction to give alms. He believes that retrieving one who has wandered or clearing the stones from the path of one who hasn't or quenching the thirst for both along the way are all forms of personal charity. He truly believes that the measure of his wealth will be the good he's done, not the estate he may have left behind. This is a truly unique and lovable man. And you can't fully grasp how unique and lovable he is until you have seen him wildly playing the organ in his size 14 bare feet. But 
let me try. One incident, as related to me by Kim and Carolyn's son, Christian, captures something of the real Kim Gardner. His passion, his faith, his moral force, and his physical presence. One Sunday morning, when Kim was serving as bishop of his LDS ward, he gathered the young priests in his office for their weekly quorum meeting. After just a few seconds of looking around the room, Kim quietly said, excuse me, I'll be back in just a moment. At home, still in bed, was the newly independent Christian gardener enjoying the luxury of a Sunday morning sleeping in. He was, after all, 16 now and old enough to take control of a few things, including what time he would go to church. Then he heard the apocalypse approaching. <laughs> there was a horrible screaming of tires in the driveway, coupled with the slamming of a door. Then a roar, actually something of a crashing sound, a quake coming down the stairway. Christian's life flashed before his eyes. In a bound, he locked the door. <laughs> to this day, he still says with a straight face that this was not an act of defiance. It was rather an honest effort to buy time. <laughs> time he dearly sensed that he needed, but to no avail. In the next instant, this boy's father came through the door. Now, mind you, he did not come through the doorway. He came through the door. <laughs> Christian said, Kim, didn't even try the doorknob. <laughs> didn't even feign effort to actually open the door. Perhaps he had seen the locking maneuver of his son. But whether he did or not, he did not bother to break stride or waste motion with needless gestures. Kim Gardner is a big man, and every cell and sinew were in motion. The door simply exploded, splinters going everywhere. The hinges spun on, well, their hinges. The doorknob flew as a veritable missile, a projectile, a lethal blunt object exploding across the room and denting the distant wall upon impact. Christian said he tried to breathe, but he couldn't. <laughs> Meanwhile, his father, who did not lay a hand on his son nor threaten to do so, said, you have two minutes to get dressed or be the first Latter-day Saint in history to attend priesthood meeting in your boxer shorts. <laughs> Not much more than two minutes later, father and son were gathered safely, fully clothed in the bishop's office, enjoying with other young men a lesson, probably one entitled, Why Christian Gardner Has Never Even Considered Sleeping In on a Sunday Morning Ever Again in Time or Eternity. I share this little story as a reminder of what all civic donors in this community would learn. You can run from Kim Gardner, but you cannot hide. Now, this closing verse is for Kim. The rest of you can listen or not. It's a tribute to him. From the tiniest, quietest little spinster in all of New England's literary history, Kim's poetic muse, Emily Dickinson, wrote, I dwell in possibility, a fairer house than prose, more numerous of windows, superior for doors. Of chambers as the cedars, impregnable of eye, and for an everlasting roof, the gambrels of the sky. Of visitors the fairest, for occupation this, 
the spreading wide of narrow hands to gather paradise. Kim Gardner has helped this community dwell in possibility. And although his brawny hands could hardly be called narrow, he has, like the poet, spread them wide to all he meets, as if to say to them of Salt Lake City, welcome to paradise. Kim, congratulations. We love you and admire you. You are a giant in our lives.